We all get a brief window of opportunity on this planet. And while you're catching up on sleep this morning, consider this. There's a snail out there, right now, risking everything to cross the largest desert of a sidewalk it's ever seen. Why? Because it beats hiding in its shell at home? Or maybe it was inspired by every snail that ever successfully reached the other side. I don't know. I'm not really sure what motivates a mollusk. But I do know this. No snail has any idea what's on the other side of that sidewalk. All he knows is that they have a shell that can be cracked. And maybe not the best reaction time in the animal kingdom. But still they go. On the off chance they might actually connect with something greater than themselves. Maybe become one of those snails that inspires another snail. Now you may say this is dumb. Snails don't surf. Well, neither did any of us. Until we did. And I believe it's, you can see one right there in the top left screen. It's a really cool vehicle, um, and it plays rather different and unique to when compared to the other tanks. Um, and it is the male version. It's got two six-pounders on either side and a machine gun in the middle. It's not the female Mark IV. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to see that, let me know below. And so let's, let's talk a little bit about the A7V. Now, Germany got their tanks kind of late in the war, which is interesting because, like, they definitely took World War II by storm given their, you know, armored and mechanized warfare, the Blitzkrieg. And I think that was because they felt a little sore by having been kind of... The British had them, I'm pretty sure, in 1916, and the Germans didn't really get them, I think, till 1918, basically, like, the last year of the war. Feel free to fact check, as you should. But the cool thing about this thing is it's got 20 millimeters of armor on the side, 30 millimeters on the front, and 10 millimeters on the top, which seems fairly armored for World War I standards, or like, you know, kind of early war, or like early tanks. However, they didn't use hardened steel. So that was one of the things which, while they had more armor, look at this, I'm trying to run this guy over. See this guy hiding behind a wall? Tried to blow it up, missed it, teammate took it out. But this thing is fun. Um, but the armament of this thing was six 7.92 millimeter machine guns and a 57 millimeter uh, frontal gun, which is what I'm operating. So I'm driving, firing, and reloading. And here's me versus a Renault FT-17. Well, me and, me and a few, with a little bit of help from my friends there. But... You gotta love tanks in Battlefield. Yes, it's not like War Thunder. Crushed! That was awesome. <laughs> Alpha. <laughs> but you can run over enemies. You can't run over your teammates. Uh, there might be realistic servers and stuff in the future, but at right now, I think that's kind of good. Because your view, your field of view is rather limited. And I'm a, I'm a War Thunder player, so every time I see a plane, I'm gonna try to shoot it down with my tank. Now what's cool is the first tank, or the first plane, I should have switched the canister around and shot him. And I wasn't <laughs> expecting him to do that. But that was pretty funny. Um, but you can switch between the canister rounds and the high explosive rounds. Almost all of the uh, buildings and stuff are destructible. And it is, it is possible, and relatively easily possible, to kill a tank. Right? But... It's, you're, they, like, everyone can be armed with anti-tank grenades and anti-tank rifles. Which kind of fire these weird, like, they call them, like, AT rockets. But, so that was a pretty quick fix where we got, we died, we got back in. Um, that's not always the case. This video.